Elon Musk's predictions are not always fulfilled, but when they are, they save you a bad time. In the latest developments for SpaceX competitor United Launch Alliance's next generation Vulcan Centaur rocket, it looks like CEO Elon Musk was right all along when he forecast major delays more than five years ago. This is truly an interesting story when a competitor with a century of rocket experience like ULA lost to a young private company, Elon Musk. In February 2018, Elon Musk made a bold promise regarding the ultimate development of ULA's Vulcan rocket. I'll seriously eat my hat with a side of mustard if that rocket flies a national security spacecraft before 2023. During that time, space enthusiasts eagerly anticipated the moment when Elon Musk would eat his hat with mustard. But even years later, the Vulcan rocket couldn't take flight, and we still haven't witnessed the side of SpaceX's talented CEO munching on his hat. To avoid Elon Musk being too busy forgetting about this promise, renowned space journalist Eric Berger shared the conversation on his X page to welcome the new year. After that, Elon Musk responded humorously saying, Guess my hat will remain uneaten. At first glance, Elon Musk's statement may seem like a confirmation of not having to eat the hat. But in reality, it carries another meaning. To gain a deeper understanding of this story, let's go back to the past in 2018. Like many of Musk's promises and predictions, this one arose to correct the person who was criticizing one of his products, the Falcon Heavy. Even before SpaceX had flown Falcon Heavy for the first time, detractors with axes to grind were already busy attempting to downplay the rocket capabilities. On February 6th, Falcon Heavy lifted off for the first time, launching a several-ton Tesla Roadster car into interplanetary space and marking the first debut of a super-heavy lift rocket since the 1980s. The successful launch also meant that ULA's last bastion of competitive advantage, the Delta IV Heavy rocket, fittingly by way of monopoly, was no longer alone. Indeed, mere months after its near-flawless debut, Falcon Heavy has already secured its first operational U.S. military launch contract. Delta IV Heavy, on the other hand, had already been preparing for retirement as part of ULA's plan to replace two complex rockets, Delta and Atlas, with Vulcan. Musk mercilessly took to task ULA's heavy lift rocket when commenters brought it up, noting that Falcon Heavy is largely comparable in a partially reusable configuration, but completely outclasses Delta IV Heavy, while still being dramatically cheaper if all boosters are expended. This contract's costing the U.S. taxpayer billions of dollars for no reason, Musk once attacked the cost of ULA missions. The SpaceX CEO estimated that Delta IV Heavy launches would cost ULA significantly more than the $400 million after the company had effectively announced the end of Delta IV medium production though ULA CEO Tori Bruno still claimed a launch price tag of around $350 million. In response to a reply noting that ULA planned to replace Atlas V and Delta IV with Vulcan Centaur for launches after 2020, Musk pulled no punches, stating that he would seriously eat his hat with a side of mustard if Vulcan flies a national security spacecraft before 2023. At that time, Tori Bruno, CEO of ULA, responded with a terse, wow. Immediately after that, ULA continued with its plans. However, the maiden flight of the Vulcan Centaur has been delayed several times since 2018. Firstly, because it took a long time for Blue Origin to deliver the first two BE-4 engines of the first stage to ULA. These engines use liquid methane instead of liquid hydrogen and have not flown on any rockets yet. They will debut with the Vulcan and will also be used on Blue Origin's future new Glenn rocket. Elon Musk has it sworn to Jeff Bezos and has been picking on ULA over engine delays until a couple of years ago. I can send you some spare engines just in case, he told Bruno on one occasion. Thanks for the offer, but I heard that your birds need quite a few to fly and I wouldn't want you to be short, Bruno replied, referring to the almost 40 methane engines each starship uses. Even though it's just a playful remark, look at it this way. Whether it's 40 engines or 60 engines, SpaceX can handle it. After all, up to now, SpaceX's engine manufacturing facilities can produce up to two engines per day, unlike Blue Origin. I dare say their engine count is probably less than one-third of what SpaceX has built. In October 2022, the Vulcan engines eventually arrived. However, the debut of the Vulcan was delayed again due to the explosion in April 2023 during ground tests of the second stage Centaur 5. Later, there was also a hydrogen leak in the first stage and the engine troubles persist with an explosion of one of Blue Origin's engines in May 2023. Blue Origin says it's already identified the proximate cause of the failure, and it's presumably working on a fix for future versions of the engine. 
Still, the fact that any of the engines that Blue Origin is building for ULA are still blowing up has to worry ULA, and it's probably going to have an impact on the company's schedule for flying the rocket. Those problems were also behind us, and the rocket was finally ready to fly in late 2023. Its first mission, scheduled for Christmas Eve, was to send the CLPS-1 mission to the moon, the return of the United States to the lunar surface after 50 years. However, the abrupt end of a wet test forced the launch to be moved to January 8, 2024, next week. This latest delay has prevented Musk from having to eat his hat, as he himself has taken it upon himself to remind us. But it's not that the Vulcan Centaur hasn't been able to launch its first national security mission in 2023. It's that it hasn't flown at all. With dozens of missions still pending for Vulcan, if it continues to face delays or is unsuccessful, ULA will undoubtedly have to pay a hefty price. The majority of these missions belong to the United States Air Force. The first USAF mission for Vulcan is scheduled for the second quarter of 2024. However, whether the Pentagon authorizes it depends on its two previous missions, CLPS-1 and Dream Chaser, going well. Do you think Vulcan launch will go successfully? Please share your speculations in the comment section. For me, if Vulcan succeeds and can compete with SpaceX, it adds an interesting dimension to the space race. A successful Vulcan launch would also indicate the stable operations of Blue Origin's powerful rocket engines. SpaceX, in turn, faces two major competitors, intensifying the space race. Yet truth be told, when ULA takes one step forward, SpaceX seems to take 10. If ULA's first Vulcan rocket launches in January 2024, SpaceX's Starship will already be on its third launch in the first quarter of the new year. Comparing the payload capacity, Vulcan doesn't match up to Starship, which can carry over 150 tons into orbit. And with an aspirational launch cost of $2 million, it's in a league of its own. As a result, ULA will fall far behind when Starship comes online. Furthermore, SpaceX is focused on reusable rockets from the start. They made the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy in such a way that they can be reused up to 10 times with minimal refurbishment. SpaceX is now developing the Starship. Both the first stage and the upper stage of this rocket are reusable, and that's a big deal because in the Falcon family, only the first stage is reusable. On the contrary, ULA does not have reusable rockets. Though both companies started their journey around the same time, ULA never had a plan to build reusable rockets. In 2016, even when SpaceX proved that orbital class rocket landing and reusability are possible, ULA had no plan for reusable rockets. Only in 2018 did they finally finalize their partial reusable rocket plan. Having said that, the rate of innovation of ULA is quite disappointing. Besides, SpaceX makes all its rocket parts in-house. They're more vertically integrated than ULA. SpaceX follows Silicon Valley culture. Build fast, fail, and iterate. On the other hand, though ULA has a lean manufacturing process, they are not as vertically integrated as SpaceX. ULA is an aggregator. They work with more than 4,000 contractors for part supply. ULA designs their rocket and builds it using those third-party parts. As a result, ULA rockets cost more. Lastly, ULA also has plans to reduce the cost of the Vulcan rocket to $100,000 to compete with SpaceX's Falcon 9. But this isn't for certain. That's all for today's episode. Hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments section below. Your feedback's very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.